These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. That is simply lovely. That is an incredible dessert. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. I certainly would not want it served up in any restaurant. In fact, I wouldn't want it served up at all anywhere. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These four chefs have been working in professional kitchens for years, but they want to prove they can compete at their industry's highest level. We want to uncover a really talented chef, someone who will be happy standing shoulder to shoulder with the greats of the culinary world. To be a great chef, you need all the basics, of course, but you need more. It's being able to put that passion on the plate. It's being able to cook from the heart. In today's show, the professionals will be set three gruelling tests. Only the best chef will make it through to the quarter-final. In this, the first of the tests, the contestants will not be cooking for Michelle. As one of only a handful of two Michelin star chefs in the country, the four contestants will have to earn the right to cook for him. To whittle them down to the best three, he's sending in his senior sous chef, Monica, to judge them. Move it! Get that garnish on the plate now! Monica, my sous chef, has been working for me for over five years. I trust her judgment. I know that if she says it's all right, mm. then it's good. Monica wants to determine who she'd be prepared to put in front of Michelle. Only the best three chefs will have the privilege to cook for him. The other will be going home. Today's skill test is to spatchcock this lovely poussin. And their palate test today is to make us a lovely lemon curd. So how do you spatchcock the perfect piece up? Very straightforward. Remove the backbone, turn the bird right side over and press. Spatchcock done. Making the lemon curd, I think that is tricky. It's very important that they keep moving that mix. And you cannot walk away from a lemon curd because it will cook through and become a scrambled egg. Let's get the chefs in. Somerset-born Matthew was originally a DJ before throwing himself into his chefing career. For me to succeed today, I need to keep focused, keep strong. You've got 10 minutes, chef. If I'm thinking on my feet, I think that's when I will shine the best. Five minutes. We got smoke coming out the pan. What, what's what's gone wrong there? Yeah, uh, took my eye off it for a sec, and I've just let it overheat. You've still got enough time to start again, okay? You've got four minutes left. You're gonna have to really move it, Matthew. A little bit of lemon, a little bit of the zest. Matthew, you got about twenty seconds. Serve us up something. Uh, first, let's start with your skills test. It's a lovely way to present it, but what would have been nice is to remove this backbone on, on both sides. Otherwise, uh, good effort. Moving onto your lemon curd. You took your eye off that pan. That was a really bad mistake, because then you were up against the clock. It's a shame. That would have been really nice if you managed to cook it on time. Shame. We've got other chefs to see. Off you go. Cheers, thank you.
that didn't go quite as I was expecting, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, completely lost my nerve and I failed two very, very, very simple tasks. So, it's a shame, really. Dad of two, Justin, tutors students for their NVQ cooking qualifications, but still wants to cook at this highest level. The reason I've entered this competition is to, to challenge myself, I think, to pit my wits against some of the best chefs out there. You've got 10 minutes, off you go. Cheers. I've got the confidence to do it. I know I have the ability to do it. I would like my kids to look back and think, yeah, that, you know, I've done something good at the end of the day. You've had five minutes. Don't forget you have a lemon curd to make as well. Yeah. Good Lord. You have three minutes left. Get yeah. a move on, please, yeah. Justin. Yeah. Let's just hope it thickens. You've got 30 seconds. OK. Spatchcocking. We wanted a straightforward spatchcock. You've taken everything out. So now it's lost its form, it's completely flat. Here's your uncurded lemon. I realise you've never made one before. Unfortunately, you ran out of time. All the flavours are there. Had you had another five minutes more, you could have got their consistency right. Mmm. It's got that creaminess, it's got that lemon zing, it's got enough sweetness. Oh, almost, almost, almost. Cheers, guys. Thanks. I think disappointed in myself, I think, more than anything. With the lemon curd, I give it my best go. I just left it a little bit late. I think if I'd have cracked on with that to start with, then, you know, it probably would have turned out how they would have liked. Originally from a small village in Scotland, head chef Alistair's passion was inspired by cooking with his grandmother as a child. I really enjoy cooking a lot. It's been my, my main part of my life except for my girlfriend. <laughs> really hard work, but it gives me a drive every day to get up in the morning. As long as the nerves don't take control, I should be okay. You've got 10 minutes, off you go. <laughs> stop you there I'm because sorry, this is hurting me. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's get, get that. Let's crack on with the next task. Give us 110% on that, OK? Focus. You've got five minutes, Alistair. You've got three minutes and we're going the right way here, aren't we? Let's get into a bowl. You've got ten seconds. Good lad. Time's up. a disgrace. What you have done is not spatchcock the pusa. You've dissected it and made quite a mess. Mm. Chef Michelle doesn't shout much, but I could guarantee you this would be a good enough reason for him to lose the plot. But let, let's have a look at your attempt at a lemon curd. Looks good to me. Faultless. Thank you. I'd happily let Michelle taste that. Thank you. To, to start off with such a mess and to keep your nerve and come up with something that Monica says is perfect, and that, that's, that's a feat, young man. Off you go. Thank you. That was unbelievable. He goes, can you spatchcock a chicken? And I was like, I've not done that since college. Certainly an experience, you can say that again. <laughs> working in a country hotel, head chef Russell had a brief stint in a Michelin kitchen on work experience. My ultimate aim is for a Michelin star, so one, two to three if I, if I can, you know, if I feel I'm that good one day. Let's go for it. I mean, everything to cook for Michelle Rue Jr., one of the greatest chefs in the world. I'd be absolutely gutted if I didn't go for it. Absolutely gutted. We've got five minutes, Russell.
Russell, I'm going to have to stop you there. Okay. Okay. Let's get on with the next task. Okay. Two minutes. This one minute, all right? Keep it in it. You know, it's, it's uh, my head. <clears throat> I can't think. The reason we stopped you is because you didn't spatchcock the chicken, but what you tried to do was joint it, and you jointed it perfectly. There was some skill in there, OK? But as soon as you messed that up, you took on a loser's attitude. You have to keep your nerve together. We won't learn anything from tasting this because the other half of this lemon curd is over there in the chinoise. This is what I want to know. If you had your nerve about you, what would you have done differently with that lemon curd? I wouldn't have put any hot egg yolks into hot liquid straight away. I have no excuse for that. We know that you know where you went wrong, OK? Mm. Russell, off you go. Head up. There's no way I'm going to get through to the next round. No way at all. That's my opinion. Completely messed it up. This was hard. Matthew he didn't remove the spine from the spatchcock, but he managed to get the skewers through it and he presented it very nicely. He took his eye off his curd, he burnt the first one, had he had enough time to finish that lemon curd, we would have got the perfect consistency. I'd love the opportunity to cook for Michelle Rue Jr, but whether or not that's going to happen now is a, is a different story. I'd like to see him go through. I'm putting him through. Alistair, his spatchcock was a complete mess, but he put it aside and kept going. He put 110% into that lemon curd and it showed. Easily the best today. At first, I thought I might have blown it by doing the poussin, but I think the dessert maybe redeemed it all. I mean, that boy has got some real fighting spirit. That is the attitude Michelle would admire in his kitchen. Justin's an interesting guy because we wanted to spatchcock the chicken, and actually, he removed every bit of bone and every bit of cartilage. He was afraid because he didn't know how to make that lemon curd, so he delayed it. I'd love to be given the chance. So just to have one more crack at it, because I don't think they saw the best of me today. Russell, what a disaster. But you could see that he could portion a chicken. Unfortunately, that's not what we wanted today. His head went down, he thought he'd failed, he couldn't recover his nerve, and he completely ruined that lemon curd. My biggest worry is, if he falls apart here, he'll be an absolute mess in front of Michelle. I don't know. I don't know. And if I come back and I got the opportunity to create a dish in front of everybody, I think I put something out that was you know, really good, possibly even exceptional, as long as it weren't spatchcock or lemon curd. We've got four chefs in here. We've got to get rid of one. It's pretty obvious to me which one's going to go. I completely agree, Greg. The chef that's going to leave us today is Russell. Guys, next time round, you're going to be cooking for my boss. Good luck, you're really going to need it. Yeah. It was probably the most nerve-wracking thing I've ever done. Never in a million years after that did I think I'd get it. I'm absolutely buzzing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm relieved to get through to go and cook for Michelle Rue because it's a big honour and it's such a oh amazing. Can't wait now. I feel that I've got a lot more to offer and a lot more to uh, to improve on. So hopefully I can shine through in the next round. Bring it on.
It's day two. Matthew, Justin and Alistair are back. And this time they have the chance to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. To get through to the quarterfinal, they have to show him they can deliver the precise, inspiring food expected at this highest level. You wanted the right to cook for Michelle Rue? Well, you've got that right. Don't worry about what went on before. Focus on the job in hand today. In front of you, you have a bream. We need two dishes using the bream and any of the ingredients in front of you. 50 minutes, off you go. This is going to show us exactly where the chefs are at. What levels of skill they have, their repertoire, it's going to tell us so much about these chefs. Their larder includes courgettes, samphire, beetroot, basmati rice, creme fraiche, plum tomatoes and horseradish. They also have a selection of plates to give Michelle a sense of their presentation skills. We're giving them sea bream today, a fantastic and versatile fish. They're going to have to scale it, fillet it, pin bone it. I don't want to find any bones in my sea bream. Whatever they choose to put with that fish, I want to be able to taste that beautiful sea bream. You've got 10 minutes left. Hi, Anister. So what are you going to cook for us? Well, first of all, I'm going to do an uh, aubergine and tomato uh, risotto kind of thing with, with the courgettes. Did you say risotto? I kind of flavoured rice in with the onions. Good. So what do these dishes tell us about you? It's simple, but hopefully it delivers what you want and it's tasty. Hopefully I can... Uh, well, try and relax. Try and get a little bit more relaxed, yeah. Yeah, 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 because you can cook, mate. How are you feeling about the competition? Oh, a lot more confident I was. I'll do Scotland food today, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Good. This is a chance to show my family and friends what, what I can do, what I've built, sir, because they've got so much belief in me, sometimes more than I have. So I'd like to show them what I can do and make them proud and bring back a way medal to the Highlands. <laughs> All right, Matthew. Have you filleted a bream before? I have in the past, yeah. You looked as if you were struggling a bit there. I was a little bit, yeah. But um, hopefully I'll be OK. What are you cooking for us here? Going to do a portion of bream with some horseradish creme fraiche, honey roast beetroot, maybe a bit of a, a herb salad with that. Hmm, sounds nice. It's a tough competition, Master Chef, isn't it? Yeah. How far do you think you can go? Um, You're not feeling very confident? We'll see. I think the competition could be very tough. You don't know until you're in that kitchen, um, and it's anybody's game at the moment. You've got 25 minutes left. I'm a little bit apprehensive to be, to be cooking for Michelle today, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, what could go wrong today? It could all go wrong, really. <laughs> Justin, what are you doing with your career at the moment? I work for a training company going into establishments and assessing chefs to achieve their MVQs. It could be council chefs, it could be nursing homes, it could be anything, but getting them up to, to be confident in their cooking. No, that's good. Yeah. What is it you're cooking for us? And I had planned to do uh, a ravioli with the fish, but I think I'm putting myself on a little bit of a tight time scale here at the moment, so I'm going to do an uh, oriental type theme with the pasta. Oriental feel yeah. with pasta. Yeah, I know. Bit of a mix and match, eh? OK, what, what do these two dishes say about you, Justin? Right, at the moment, they say confused, yes. <laughs> to be honest. We've got five minutes left. Guys, you've got just three minutes. You've got to start plating. You've only got three minutes left. Sixty seconds. Come on, come on. A 
That's it, time's up. Father of two, Justin's first dish is a lime, olive and bream omelette served on a bed of pasta with beetroot and samphire. Justin, I don't know where to start with this, really. I mean, it, it is it is chaos on a plate. There, there is no, no other way of describing it. What made you stick it in an omelette? I'd prepared the filling to do a ravioli and the pasta didn't work out, so it was a last minute ditch putting something together. <laughs> that was the best I could do. But you still use the pasta? Yeah, yeah. It really is the most unusual combination of flavours. I honestly don't think I've ever come across <laughs> anything like that. Most bizarre. And I certainly would not want it served up in, no. in any restaurant. No. In fact, I wouldn't want it served up at all anywhere. No. Lime, olive and bream omelette. Listen, you need, to, you need to take a breath. You need to take a more measured approach to your cooking. Justin must show he has what it takes with his pan-fried fillet of bream with ratatouille and an oriental dressing. This is a vast improvement on your first plate. This actually looks quite nice. It's well presented. Fish is really well cooked. It's got a nice crisp skin. And then you've got this odd combination of a, a Mediterranean-style vegetable with uh, an Asian dressing. Mm. It's most bizarre. It doesn't taste right. It's quite unpleasant. I mean, you've just got to really consider the ingredients you are putting together. It's just more of a blind panic more than anything on that. <laughs> At this moment in time, I feel absolutely gutted, to be honest. I don't know, I think I just let the occasion completely get to me. <laughs> I don't think I want to do another omelette ever again. Uh. Scotsman Alistair hopes to impress with his pan-fried sea bream topped with dill creme fraiche on a roasted garlic and samphire salad. I think the uh, canelle on top of the creme fraiche and the, the little chives on top makes it look really pretty. The fish. Um, not only looks good, but it tastes good. However, you've mixed samphire with some vegetables, some almonds, some tomato, and good lord, some olives. There's so much going on in this bowl that it's detracting from this beautiful fish. I think the adding of samphire there, nice salty crunch, is a perfect accompaniment to fish. And after that, it all goes firing down here. There's no need to do it. Alistair's second dish is pan-fried sea bream with roasted beetroot and citrus-flavoured basmati rice. It's not dressed very well, not put on the plate really well. Hmm. Right. That should never happen. You got tweezers? We gave you tweezers. Uh, that could have got stuck in my throat. Shame, because your fish is seasoned and cooked again properly. This basmati rice kind of risotto... God knows what, is not right either. You're just trying too hard. Yeah, keep it simple. I, I really don't like the look of bright pink rice. I don't like it at all. Think classically what matches mm -hmm. and, and stop there. Okay. Don't reinvent cuisine. Having Michelle Rue Jr. there was a bit of an added pressure to the, the situation, but I think I just tried too hard and that's my problem. It just went all pear shit. Matthew has made pan fried sea bream with roasted beetroot and horseradish creme fraiche finished with hazelnut oil. I like it, I think it looks good. However, I need to get that, that skin crisped up. The fish is cooked properly. It's still very moist, which is good. The beetroot and horseradish cream is delicious. 
it absolutely annihilates the fish, though. Really does kill it. You can't taste the fish at all, which is actually a shame because your plate's very attractive, your fish is cooked nicely, but that bream is not powerful enough. Matthew's second dish is fillet of bream with buttered samphire and baby courgettes in a white wine and fresh cream sauce. The fish is nicely cooked. The samphire's got a nice bite to it. And your sauce is, is not bad. It's lacking a little bit of acidity. Good, just to give it a zing. It's clean, it's neat. Not bad. We are on our way to a lovely dish, but we haven't arrived there yet. I feel good that uh, I didn't get ripped into as much as the other guys did. I'll try and impress them a little bit more for the next round. Yeah, only halfway. You can turn this around. Focus, off you go. That was not a strong round. Ah, oh, gosh, it was bad. It really was bad. I, I don't know where to start here. Justin, he tried to make the ravioli, the ravioli didn't work, and he just went into a downward spin. Ah, oh, no, I, I do not want to see that again. And I've really got to question his palate because ratatouille with an Asian honeyed dressing is never going to work in a million years. I hope, I really do hope, that he will redeem himself in the next round. Definitely today's performance was not up to scratch whatsoever. We've got to regroup and hopefully pull some rabbit out of a hat in the next round. <laughs> Alistair has cooked fish really nicely and then he's added beetroot and nuts and then orange. Everything, in fact, that was on the bench, he threw at it. In the next test, he's going to have to concentrate and focus 100% on flavours. This afternoon, I've got to just calm down, just chill out, see more focus, and just go in there with a clear head. So I've got the ability, I can do it. Come on, I'll do it. I think Matthew's a good cook, he's got a good touch, and he has real presentation skills. His beetroot and horseradish cream was delicious, but the fish was lost because it was overpowered. The flavours are almost there, so th there's, there's a lot of promise. After this morning's a few little hiccups, I think I need to make sure that everything's perfect all the time and can't get anything past the judges. So. We have got to get a much better standard in the next test. Fault-free cooking in the classic recipe test, or else they are out. plenty of mistakes in the versatility test. You can redeem that situation now with this classic recipe test. We want you to cook a fillet of beef with Bernays sauce. A great classic dish. We want you to cook the fillet of beef medium. A perfect medium. We also want you to cook a cannoli, an Italian classic pastry. We have one quarter final place, one hour, 20 minutes. Best of luck. We are going to ask the chefs to cook this beef medium. It should be pink, not grey. Bernays is a classic hot, creamy French sauce made from egg yolks and reduced vinegar mixed together over a low heat and combined with butter. The Bernays sauce should be light and unctuous and creamy. It could split if you put too much butter in it. You could overcook it. The egg yolks could scramble. Extremely difficult to get right. Their second classic is a traditional Sicilian dessert, cannoli. Dough is wrapped around a cylinder to create a tube, then deep fried. These are then filled with creamy ricotta cheese and an added flavor of your choice. The pastry should be crisp and crunchy and yet still have a bit of give in the middle. They have to whisk this ricotta cheese properly and get some flavor into it. This really is a very tricky dessert. Okay, Alistair, 
You cool? You understand what you're doing? Uh, I do. I've got my garnish on. I've got my roast, the roast potato to go with the beef, sit under the beef fillet, and the brownie sauce around the edge. Great. Great. What do you think we need to see from you? Bit of finesse and don't make it too complicated. You shouldn't be mixing classics. Just, that's why they're there. They're tried and tested. I like what you're saying. You, you really are making sense. It's just a matter of putting it, my words on the plate, really. The fear of failure for Alistair is, is so great that it is getting to him a little bit. He says he's learnt his lesson. He's going to keep things simple. Will he? Or will he be tempted to add that extra little something that may mess it up? You've had 15 minutes. Matthew, I'm taking it for granted that you've cooked a piece of beef before. Once or twice, yeah. And Bernays? What about Bernays? Bernays, yeah. Every day before service. So it's Good. Desserts normally are not too big a problem for me, but I'm a little unfamiliar with the uh, dessert today. How are you going to take it that little step further? Hopefully I'll follow the recipe, make sure that I get all those points perfect, and then see if I can chuck something in for uh, a little bit of an impression factor. But you don't know what? Not yet, no. <laughs> see how it goes. I'm sure he can do these dishes. He seems confident, but can he deliver us good flavours? Justin, are you making any pasta? No, definitely not. Great start, Justin. <laughs> I like it already. Good. What do you think it is that we are now looking for from you? Um, I would say, well, basically, I've got to nail these two dishes. It's got to be refined, it's got to be bang on, and hopefully you'll have two plates of food you can enjoy this afternoon. Why is this competition so important to you? It's given me an appetite and a bite to get back into the kitchen um, and try and refine my skills further and hopefully not be able to pass that on in my current job. So that's what I do. At the moment, Justin is unrecognisable from the panicky cook we had in the versatility test. Bernays is already made. He's grilling off his beef well in advance so that it can rest properly. He's on board. He's focused. Five minutes left. Come on, boys. Come on, play up. Thirty seconds, come on! That's it, time's up. With a quarter-final place at stake, the chef's classic dishes must reach the standards Michelle requires. First up is their fillet, which needs to be cooked medium-rare and served with a Bernays sauce. Justin, we're going to start with you. Other than the pom fondant being too dark, it looks good. That is exactly how I would want a fillet of beef to be presented on the plate. Thank you. Your beef slightly overdone. Medium should still have some moisture in it, yeah? This is a bit dry. You've added some um, garlic to the spinach, which is lovely. This does say to me that you can cook. Well done. Thank you. The feel of your Bernays is absolutely right. It could do with a bigger tang. Bigger, bigger tang. Mm. Alistair. Alistair, you told us you were going to keep it simple. You were going to stay true to the classics. That's what you've done. What a brilliantly presented plate of food. You've dressed it in a lovely spiral. Pretty as a picture. Thank you. For me, that's a really good medium. It's pink, but got no blood in it. Your potato rusty overcooked on one side. Yeah. Such a shame. Bernays, a little bit too sharp. It should not overpower the beef. Love the textures. Absolutely love the textures. You've got buttery soft Bernays. It's too acidic. But almost.
OK, Matthew. Mmm. Good cooked meat. I love your mash. Your bayonnaise, it, it, it's missing the, the herbs flecked in the, uh, the mixture. But it's creamy, unctuous, yet light and fluffy. Nice. Really nice. Very good bernays. Soft, moist beef. Well done. That was your beef. Bring in your desserts. It's the last chance for the chefs to impress the judges with their cannoli. Justin, let's have a look. Justin, that is simply lovely. Crisp outside, creamy inside with the right amount of sugar, the right balance of flavouring. That's got... that's got class written on it. Well done. That's top-notch. It's a 100% improvement on the versatility test. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. You are unrecognisable from the guy who was cooking for me in the last round. Yeah. That is an incredible dessert. I'm feeling a lot more relieved now than I was this morning, I'll put it that way. I think I've given a true account of what I'm actually able to do, and I'm happy. I can hold my head up, held up high now, so, yeah. Right, Alistair. Uh, the first thing, obviously, we see is the fact that the cannoli has collapsed a bit and it's, it's cracked, um, which is a shame. You've chosen to put chocolate through it, mixed in with the uh, ricotta, which is quite nice, because we do get that chocolatey flavour through there. But, for me, it's lacking a little bit of sugar. I like the idea of the chocolate in it. I like that little cocoa hit. It's not sweet enough. That's a, that's a shame. I'm now feeling mentally and physically drained. It's not quite sweet enough. I tried a little bit of honey, but... It wasn't quite there. Matthew, your turn. I like the presentation. Looks good. I like the syrup that you've made, the masala syrup. That adds another dimension to this. However, your cannoli are too thick. I like your presentation, your style. I think you have style with your plates. I love that syrup. Masala and a little bit of sharp orange, I love it. But there isn't enough flavour in your ricotta. Nowhere near enough. After both tasks, I'm feeling good, to be honest, but we can only uh, see what happens as the final verdict. Well, what a recovery. What a recovery. Off you go. I'm really pleased for them because the versatility test was a disaster. We were on the brink of uh, chaos. But that classic recipe test, what a turnaround. Alistair had a very shaky round, the versatility test. The first dish he gave us was a beautifully cooked fillet of bream, and then he ruined this by literally taking every ingredient that was on the bench and put it underneath the fish. I mean, it was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen, or I thought it was, until I saw his second dish, which was the fish laying on top of well-cooked rice that was bright pink. In the classic test, that beef was perfectly cooked. Unfortunately, his Bernays was far too sharp. Presentation was spot on, though. His cannoli weren't that successful. They were a little bit greasy, they were falling apart, and there was no sweetness in his ricotta. I like my ideas, with the way I'm thinking, the way I'm going forward, so... I think I did the best I could do under pressure. Alistair made a lot of mistakes in the versatility test, and I'm afraid he didn't redeem himself enough in the classics. He has to go. This is between Justin and Matthew. I don't think I've ever seen food as bad as Justin served us up this morning. I mean, the idea of a sea bream omelette was just ridiculous. 
And then he gave us bream with a ratatouille, which is a Mediterranean vegetable dish, with a sweetened honey oriental sauce. I thought, no, this is ghastly. He was staring down at the abyss. But what a turnaround. The presentation of his steak was perfect. And then he served us up without doubt the best dessert on the table. I agree with you. The best dish we had today was Justin's cannoli. He absolutely turned it around. I know a lot of chefs who would have literally walked out after that versatility test and in shame, in absolute shame, because what he gave us was shameful. After this morning, I was thinking of going home, <laughs> to be honest. But um, I'm hoping that they'll see that there is true talent there and that they could actually give me a chance. Uh, it's all in the lap of the gods now, I guess. We'll just have to see what happens. Matthew didn't get off to a bad start at all. His presentation much, much better than the other two. He gave us beetroot salad flavoured with dill and horseradish cream. Very nice. But it did overpower the delicate flavour of the fish. His classic recipe test, the cannoli were too heavy and there wasn't enough sweetness through the ricotta, which was strange because he made us a very lovely masala and orange syrup. His beef, I thought, was very well cooked. It was still very juicy and succulent. He made by far the best Bernays. I would say he has been the most consistent all the way through. I'd be delighted to get through, so uh, fingers crossed for that, and uh, we can only hope, I suppose. We have to come to a decision. Who's it going to be? I know who I want to see in the quarter-final. to the quarter-final is... Matthew. Well done. Absolutely delighted, really. Um, it's taken a while to go in, to be honest, but, um, yeah, I'm really, really chuffed, yeah. I think if I'd have managed to pull out the stops this morning, it might have been a different different kettle of fish because this afternoon really showed what I could have done properly. Uh, but hey, that's the way it goes. I think I was just trying too hard. That's my problem. But anyway, these things happen. It wasn't meant to be, so good luck to the next guy. So. For the quarterfinals, I'm really going to have to up my game. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a great chance, a great opportunity, so bring it on. Matthew will be back for the quarter-final to battle it out for the title of Professional MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs>